St. Michael's, I invite you all to please kneel. Please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. We gather on this first Sunday of Lent, and in our gospel, we hear that Jesus goes into the desert and spends 40 days in prayer where he is tempted by Satan. His 40 days in the desert serve as the inspiration for our 40 days of Lent as we prepare for the coming of Easter. And so as we enter into our Lenten season, we take a moment to pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us with one another and with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds caused by sin and division. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your heavenly Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated now to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Responsorial Psalm. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth for those who keep your covenant. 
Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Your ways, Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. After John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Living here in Iowa, it is hard to imagine what life in the desert is like. The desert is such a different world, which can be blazingly hot during the day and bitterly cold at night. It teems with strange creatures, 
and is filled with strange sounds and sights. To enter the desert is to leave behind the world we know and the places which feel safe to us. In the early church, countless men and even some women who were called the Desert Fathers and who were the forerunners to modern-day monasticism would go into the desert to learn how to live life. They believed that important truths could be found in the desert. For them, the desert was not a wasteland, but a place of revelation, a place of wonder, of mysterious graced happenings from God. In the desert where everything is simplified and reduced to its basics, the desert fathers were able to more clearly understand themselves and their relationship to God. This first Sunday of Lent compares these 40 days of preparation for Easter to the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert. Like Jesus, Lent is summoning us to examine our lives carefully in order for us to return to what really matters most in life. No one like Jesus could endure 40 days in the desert and remain the same. And neither should we be able to move through these 40 days of Lent without changing our lives. Lent is a season which is meant to be cleansing and purifying. It is a time in which the trivial and the excesses of life are stripped away and we discover what is absolutely central to living life well. Like the desert fathers who went into the desert to learn how to live life, we should enter into Lent in order to learn how to live life to its spiritual fullness. We should use these days of Lent to examine some of our values and of our habits and to question some of our behaviors and our practices and maybe even to rethink our priorities. None of us should emerge from Lent unchanged. Today's gospel is short and simple, and yet at the same time it is dramatic and mysterious. Mark tells us that Jesus was put to the test by Satan. It's hard to know exactly what this means, but it is clear that Jesus' desert experience was a time of struggle, a time of conflict, and even a time of danger. In the desert, Jesus finds himself locked in combat with the powers of evil. Powers battling to establish sovereignty in the world. And in his struggle, Jesus is watched over, strengthened, comforted by angels, just as he will be in the last days of Lent during his final struggle with evil in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion. In the desert, Jesus is tested, but not overcome. Like Jesus, our life, too, is a struggle between virtue and vice, between goodness and evil. Indeed, there is a battle being waged in our hearts and souls with the demons on one side and angels on the other. The Lenten question is this. Which way will I go? Lent is a time for reform, a time for conversion, a time for redirecting our lives back to God. We need to examine our everyday choices and behaviors to see what they reveal to us about our values, our loves, and our priorities in life. Lent is not a time to be wasted. It really is a matter of life and death. It involves nothing less than our own redemption and salvation. The key to reforming our lives and being restored back to God is what the quality of our relationship to Jesus Christ 
is all about. Today's second reading from Peter tells us that Jesus entered the world so that he could lead us back to God. If Lent is a time for us to move closer to God and trying to live the life of God, then it will all hinge on our current relationship to the Lord. Are we really disciples of Christ or merely admirers of Jesus? If we aspire to be disciples, then Lent is calling us to live our lives filled with generosity, with mercy, with forgiveness, with justice, and compassion and peace for all. Our growing in faith question then on this first Sunday of Lent, what needs to die or to change within me in order that I may find eternal life in Jesus Christ? As we reflect upon the changes that we may need to make in our lives, we now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life of the world to come. Amen. Our God has made a covenant with all of us, promising never to devastate our home planet, the earth. Let us ask God's strength that we may keep our part of this holy covenant. Jesus, even you were tempted by Satan. Help us to call on your grace to resist temptation. Strengthen us on our journey this Lent as we work to become the people you want us to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders in our country that they seek the path of justice in all their decisions and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In all situations, help us to remember the words of Jesus. Whatever you did for one of these least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a parish, we are again participating in the Catholic Relief Service's Rice Bowl program. We pray for the people around the world who are hungry, especially children, that they will receive the nutritious food they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own faith community, may we welcome the homeless or lost recognizing that Jesus himself lived without a permanent place to call home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Michael's, the special intention of this Mass, and for Norma Schmitz, sister of Nick Beaker, and sister-in-law of Mary Ann Canaan, both of our parish, and for Teresa Bloom, mother of Nancy Osborne of our parish, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, we pray the prayer for vocations found in the back of our missalettes. Lord of the harvest, your word finds a home in our hearts, calls us into community, and invites us to generous service of the human family. Bless with courage and spirit your priestly people, called to full participation in the one body of Christ. May many choose to respond in public service to your call offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us be seated now for the preparation of the gifts. Please join us in singing number 433, Amazing Grace, number my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Michael and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 393, Open My Eyes, number 393. Our announcements. Just a reminder that during this season of Lent, Father Wayne Goebbels will be doing a series of talks about the Synoptic Gospels. 
Uh, his first one will be this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock in the Rosamond Parish Center. Should go to roughly about 8.30, and it's on uh, Gospel of Mark. And then we'll also have Matthew and Luke later on in the Lenten season. So we hope to have a good turnout this Thursday night for Father Wayne's talk on the Gospel of Mark. I know Lent was early this year, and it seems to have caught people by surprise. We had kind of a small crowd for stations on Friday evening and for our fish fry, so we just want to remind people that we are now in Lent and that we will be having stations at 5.30 on Friday evenings here in the church, and the fish fries will go from 5.30 to 7 o'clock, and uh, the fish is still very good. The fish tacos are wonderful. Uh, we are doing something a little different. We've dropped the mac and cheese for spaghetti um, both Alfredo and marinara. I can attest that, in my opinion, the Alfredo spaghetti tastes very much like mac and cheese. So for the little ones who are not big fans of uh, fish, try that uh, spaghetti Alfredo and tell me if it doesn't taste like mac and cheese, okay? So we hope to have better crowds uh, come this Friday and throughout the remainder of our Fridays of Lent. St. Michael's is taking part in the rice bowl program, as we heard in our petitions today. Rice bowls are available at the entryways to the church. Uh, feel free to take one home and to use it during this Lenten season. Also, we have the uh, nails. We've uh, had a tradition here in the last couple of years of uh, taking a nail home and using that as something to remind us of the thing that we're working on, the change we're trying to make in our life, or the devotion, or whatever it is we're engaged in. Uh, put it on your bedstand, put it on your dining uh, room. Uh, your a place where you eat, whether it's in the kitchen table, the dining room table, uh, some place where it's visible that you see it daily as a gentle reminder of that that you're trying to work on during this time of Lent. And then on Good Friday, as people come forward to reverence the cross, we'll have a bucket and we'll invite you to drop those nails uh, in that bucket before the cross as a sign of your ongoing efforts to renew and change your lives. Uh, as we thank our Lord for his willingness to die on the cross for our sins. So we invite you to take a nail home today and to use it throughout the Lenten season. And finally, uh, I want to commend our song leader, Darby, for her courage today. You may have noticed that, uh, uh, or you did not know, is that Darby just had braces put on. And they, uh, they're a little tough on the gums and on your jaw. It's hard to sing, so she's a real trooper. Darby, thank you for leading us in singing, and within a week or so, that pain should go down and you should be back to your normal self. So thank you for sharing your gifts in spite of the pain of having braces put on. Let us stand and pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing number 597. We are the light of the world, number 597. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. Blessed. 